What's up? Welcome to the Existential Story Podcast. Do you think success is just about achievement? Is it about you against everyone else in the world? And do you often wonder what has that done to us? I have. I think what well, we have, I think, because we were talking about this earlier. So, you know, let's talk about that today. Is our idea of success dangerous today on the Existential Stoic Podcast? I'm Danny. I'm here with Randy. What's up, Randy? Yo, Danny. Yeah, I think, yeah, like you mentioned, our idea of success can be dangerous because it's very one-faceted. Yeah, it's a good way to say it. It is, right? It's all about, like, achievement and the dollar bill, getting that mm-hmm. money. <laughs> and and there's so much there's there's so many casualties that occur because of that. Like look at the harm that we're doing to the planet just in the name of yeah. success and all this stuff. And yeah, you know the planet will sur- will outsurvive us, sure, but we'll have this. Uh, you know, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of years or whatever in the future, whatever creatures are here, we'll find a whole bunch of plastic and they'll be <laughs> like, ooh, what kind of creatures <laughs> developed <laughs> this? <laughs> Like that'll be, that'll be our legacy. Just like a giant layer of plastic across the earth. (laughs) Yeah, it'll be like that. that You'll dig down far enough and you'll find it. Just like when they do with like the asteroids that hit. You know, it's funny too, because it's like the things we do in the name of, you know, just making money and success and trying to outdo the other person and trying to bury the other, without really thinking about like the long-term effects, without thinking about, you know, community, without thinking... And like when we were talking about this before, too, I think it's interesting. It's like, what are we losing in the process? And has this really harmed us? I mean, because it is a question I think about a lot, like, because there is that part of me that like, I know that if I just, if I just work all the time, I can do really well or whatever I, I put my mind to and I can do, you know, succeed. But you also are sacrificing, you're making a choice, right? You're sacrificing family, friends, other hobbies, other things you enjoy, you're sacrificing spending your time how you want in other ways that might be enriching quality that might actually make you happy. And so like, is this idea of success also making us, I mean, we live at one of the, we have probably one of the easiest, easiest existences in history for human beings right now, but it's also like happiness is ranked super low. Most people are unhappy. They're miserable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause I think we're chasing the wrong things. And I, I had a very vivid, experience of this this past week so like everybody who listens to the podcast knows that i'm very results driven very you know high achievement everything like that well this past week one of my really good friends uh she went to the hospital for surgery and i felt like i had to be there to you know when she woke up from surgery to help take care of her and so I went and I did, and I struggled with that because I was like, but if I do that, that means I'll be uncomfortable. That means I won't be able to get done all the stuff that I need to achieve. And all these things popped up. And, but it was like, it was like really deep inside me where I knew I had to go do that. So, so I did that. And literally like the four days that I spent, I found everything that I've been searching for in those like four days, like the fulfillment, the peace, the contentment, like my life feeling like it's a holiday, like all this stuff that I've been searching all over for, like maybe if I just make some more money or maybe if I just choose the right profession or maybe if I do like all of that stuff, I just found that from being in service to someone else. And it was just, it, it's like, it doesn't make sense. That's the thing. Well, it doesn't make sense, but it happens. But I think it kind of, well, okay, hear me out. I think it might make a little sense though, right? Because it's like, we all have this idea that like, if we get the success, if we get this, like, we'll be, you know, we'll be fulfilled. We'll be happy. But then when you do something like that, like you were lucky, you, you were able, you were in a position where you were able to do it, which is awesome. Right. You're able to be there for them. You're able to be there for a friend. And you're like the most important person in the world when you're doing that, because you're literally like, you're objectively making their life easier, better. You're needed it's like appreciated you know what I mean like it's and it's not I'm not I mean and I and it sucks because I feel like so much of like what we're motivated by is selfish and I don't I don't think that's a bad thing by any means but like you said right you were worried about being uncomfortable you know initially at least right and it's like I had had to sleep on a hospital couch like yeah so it's, it's, it's not comfortable I had to sleep on a hospital couch but like it didn't even it didn't even register you know, like I had, I had such deep sleep while I was there. No, no issues or anything like, yeah. So crazy. Isn't that funny? It's just like just being there for somebody else. 
and I think that's like maybe that is our problem because like we were when we were talking about this briefly before I was thinking about you know like so much of like how we this world's transitioned into this success oriented achievement oriented but like not even like I wouldn't even say real achievements always, they can be empty because it's just about the money. It's not about actually what you do. It's not about making the world better. Like I think of achievements, and I look at like these great philosophers and stuff and they were interested in ideas and like they didn't earn a lot of money. Most of them were, you know, fairly poor or, you know, whatever. But like, it's interesting because I think our, our the orientation has shifted. It's very selfish. It's very individualistic. We've kind of lost that community and we've lost our sense of like, the greater purpose maybe of humanity or the greater goal of like uplifting everyone or uplifting everything. Yeah. Yeah. It's become, it's become a very selfish society and especially, especially in America and everything like that. Everybody's like, what's in it for me. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Hmm. How do we, so, so, I mean, look, we all live with this idea of success. I do, you do. And I want to succeed. So how, how can we help? Because if people, if people see this too, if they struggle with this, you know, what do we need to do to kind of both live in this world, but also maybe, you know, not sacrifice our happiness entirely, not destroy our lives in the process? Well, okay. So, so first off, I would say that, um, you know, this is just my experience. So try this on. One person's experience. Like maybe, <laughs> yeah. So like maybe, maybe this stuff doesn't work for you. But like, I remember, I remember very vividly when I was a, when I was a kid, I used to be a boy scout and probably one of the greatest, like the greatest feelings that I ever had was one day after we spent all day cleaning up a cemetery and it was like miserable. There was, uh, there was like, it was a mess. There was poison ivy all over the place and I'm allergic to poison ivy. So like everywhere I went, I was always on like high alert. One of the, one of the dads actually got poison ivy in his mouth and like, Oh God, really terrible experience. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh. But, uh, because he was doing, he was doing the weed whacker. And so like, oh. and it got into his mouth and the oils um, can get in there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's terrible. But like at the end of the day, after struggling through the entire day, the cemetery was like beautiful. And I drove past it a lot as a kid. And I just remember like the feeling that I had after that was immense so like trying to find those feelings for yourself like the same stuff I found this past week trying to find those feelings for yourself because for me it's being it's being in service to other people but that may not be for everybody like for other people it may actually be you know being on stage in front of everybody singing or it may be having a novel that everybody reads whatever it is like finding what that is and then trying to direct your life towards that uh because just going after money is somewhat inauthentic because money oh, yeah. it's pieces of paper or cloth or whatever whatever yeah. whatever it's made of and while it is a medium that can help you get somewhere if you just collect too much of this cloth paper it's not fun because then you get to a point where you're like oh this is what i thought i wanted now i have it this is totally empty what's wrong now what yeah Yeah. (laughs) and you know it's funny we have so many examples of that it's absurd and yet Mm -hmm. everybody still goes for the same thing and i I, but i I also like what you said too though because it's like that idea of like you know just doing something to like in that case improve your community or just doing something for others i mean like and it could be anything like and i think that's one of the things we kind of lost is this our mindset on just focused on enriching ourselves in terms of like monetary wealth we've kind of isolated ourselves from others and from our community in a way where we don't sort of see our impact on the world we don't see that direct relationship between like our choices our actions and a better environment or a better place to live in general like you know i think that's a huge factor Mm -hmm. that's a good one yeah i would also say that in or so at first you have to take care of yourself and then once you do that, you can take care of other people. So like a lot of, a lot of people want, think success is money or a better job or promotion, whatever it is, because they think that that will enable them to do the other things. And yeah. partially, yes, but also partially you have to, like anything with money, you need to know how much you're making and how much you're spending. Yeah. 
because people get caught in the trap of just trying to increase how much they're making. And as soon as they make more, their living expenses go up along with it. Once they get a raise, they already bought a new car. So they're yeah. not making any more money. They're already doing the same exact thing. So the goal should be, and again, I'm just talking from personal experience, but the goal should be trying to make as much as possible while trying to decrease your expenses as possible. So then you have that little gap that you can actually put into savings, which will eventually, if you invest it uh, intelligently, will allow you to then make money from those investments. Yeah, so you and help other, go, and do anything else you want to do, right? Yeah. 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 And then that gives you a little bit of freedom to where you can go and pursue the other things because doing it backwards doesn't really work either because if you just try and help other people and you're broke and you can barely take care of yourself you're not helping them and you're not helping yourself so yeah you're going to bring yourself down even further and then you're going to make it impossible for yourself to even help others right you you destroy yourself in the process you know i'm actually glad you mentioned that because in my own experience i think one of the things i struggled with initially too when i was trying to get like the transition in my life and get things get out of depression and get things back you know going in the right direction was like the 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 allure of wealth or money and our finances it's like also can be tricky because i think initially we we view that as our main problem because it's the most obvious like oh i don't have money to get these things that i want that's why i'm unhappy or i don't have the money to live the life that i want that's why i'm unhappy but really what we're missing is that we're unhappy because of other stuff and if we fix those problems then we can start fixing the money problems and then we can start fixing those other things, right? That it's impossible to do that until you take care of yourself first and until you identify what kind of life you really want. And I think, but so many of us miss that because, you know, not being able to pay your bills is so apparent and, and readily like, you know, you just acknowledge it all the time because you're getting letters and stuff like that, that like you forget that it's, I can't pay my bills because of these other issues that I need to address now. And then that other stuff will take care of itself. Yeah, absolutely. And there, I mean, there are really good resources for that, like the book, The Total Money Makeover by Dave Ramsey. That's incredible. Uh, also, there's a really good book called Life and Air, which is millionaire, except you replace million with yeah. life. So Life and Air. And that's a really good one, because it actually is about creating the ideal life that you want, not about accumulating this mass of money. So yeah, yeah so those are, no, those are really important. Oh. Yeah. No, go ahead. Those are really important that, things to do. Go for it, Danny. Now let's keep talking to each other. It's fine. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to say that's another really good point too, which is I think like getting caught up in that idea that that's the good life and you just totally miss out on like creating your own life because that, that's just, that's just one facet of a life. And we all focus on it like as if that makes or breaks a life, but it really, it's such a small thing into like your whole quality of life, what matters to you, what's valuable, what makes your life better and, and what can even be a good life? Because I think we've talked about this before. Not everybody would want the life of Elon Musk. I totally wouldn't. That is not appealing to me at all. And so that direction would not be good for me to go in. So it's like, you need to understand, I think those values and find out what's right for you before you can even start on that journey. But we get it thrown on our face so much that that is the best life that that's that's success that's what it looks like that it's hard to even envision anything else it's almost like we have like narrowed our perspective of success to such a small thing that it kind of pushes out everything else yeah and i've also uh i've also noticed that especially with money a lot of people are gamblers and also a lot of people don't really understand the golden (laughs) rule so so like first i'll talk about the gamblers is a lot of people keep trying these things that have like a one in hundred million chance of winning, like playing the lottery. A lot of people play the lottery, but it's basically a tax on people who can't do math. And so the, the chances of winning are so small. Yes. If you win, you're set for about a year until you spend all the money and then you're worse off afterwards. But like most people don't get that playing the lottery has like a less than 1% chance of winning. But what we talked about earlier, way less than you, 1%. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like I know, but we'll just, so say, we'll, just yeah. say, we'll just say 1% yeah. because that's something that the mind can, can, can conceive. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Whereas like something like making more than you spend and investing that amount in just a simple like index fund, S&P index fund gets between 8 and 12% per year on average. Well, 
the chance of winning with that over 30 years is like 99%. So yeah, you will have more than you put in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like a lot of people are gamblers. They just keep trying these things to get rich quick and nobody get gets rich quick except for the person who created that get rich quick scheme. All right. But that, that again goes back to, I think that's that small narrow window or idea of what success looks like. Right. And it's trying to get mm-hmm. there with no work. Is trying to just magically up oh, now. Now I'm successful. I have money as if that changes anything. <laughs> yeah. And then the other thing is people don't understand the golden rule. So like do unto others as you want done unto yourself. Like a lot of people get short sighted because they feel that they need the money. Now they're willing to exploit others, steal from others, do all these things. And they don't realize they have to like live with themselves for the rest of their life. Like there was somebody, there was somebody I know who a week or two ago really revealed his character to me when he was looking for a way to cheat other people out of all of their money. And immediately, like at that moment, I was like, okay, we can't hang out anymore. Like, uh, I, you know, I did what I could to like, try and let him recognize it. Like, even though it's over the computer, those are other people. Like they exist. Yeah. I know they don't feel yeah. like that to you, but they actually exist. But like, it really revealed his character. Like, and, and, I, and I asked him, I was like, would you want someone to do that to you? And he's like, no. And I'm like, well, then why on earth would you do that to somebody else? Like, don't you see? It's just going to come back to you. And I mean, he's young. Maybe it didn't really resonate, but it was just like the, the, the ends that people will go to to accumulate this cloth or paper dyed in a specific yeah. color green. You know, it's crazy. Well, it's a, yeah, it is. It's crazy. And it's, you really see how people destroy their lives because of it. And it sucks. Cause it's like, that's why so many people I think are unhappy too, because like you said, you know, they find these ways where you might be able to cheat people to get that money, but then you have to live with that forever where they don't, they're so short sighted looking at just the, just the ends that they don't see the means. They don't see all the consequences either connected to it. And you have okay, to live with philosopher. It. Yeah. The end justifies the means. Everybody knows that saying. Machiavelli, yeah. the end justifies the means. So also when like, is it not? Know. When does the end not justify the means? Well, you have to actually know what you're talking about when you talk about the ends justifies the means. What ends? What value justifies it? Are we talking about life? Are we talking about happiness? Are we talking about community? Are we talking about wealth? What are we talking about? And why does it justify? It? I think this is what people forget. Yeah, it's fun to say the ends justify the means, and it's an easy thing to say, but that means nothing unless you know what you're actually talking about and what you value. Because, yeah, I might be able to say, like, yeah, I could cheat these people out, get all this money. But if that's totally contrary to my values as a person, to my sense of humanity, to how I want to live my life, then those ends do not justify the means of getting it. And there's got to be a better way. And I think that's what we keep forgetting because, like, this idea of success is so short-sighted, you know? Yeah. That, that's a great point. Uh, so it's there was this... Uh... I'll remember the name of it. But anyways, this idea that that uh, abundance, money, wealth, all this stuff is a zero sum game. Like if I win, everybody else has to lose. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't make it doesn't no, like it makes it that way, but it's not true because no. the more value I create, the more that can be created for others. Like, for instance, look at a good book. OK, you read a good book and imagine not a. Yeah, sure. You had to pay money for the book or you rented it from a library, whatever it is. But guess what? All the people who read that book, they can get value and it can just grow and grow infinitely. So the idea of, especially with trying to cheat people, thinking that it's, it's somewhat limited, you get caught because really it just keeps on growing. Look at how much money they're printing in the world. 30, I think it's like $30 billion a month, something like that. 300 billion a month, something like that. And yeah, so it's, it's literally infinite, but like the more value you can provide, everybody else can provide more value from that and just kind of flowers. So yeah, it yeah. does. No, and I think you hit the nail on the head there too, which is the idea of value. What is valuable? And I think to just money in and of itself is not valuable. People forget this. It's a means to an end. Money is an intermediary. It's a way of exchange, right? You trade something for something else and money is an easy exchange rate, right? It's an easy way to say, this is worth this much, that's worth that much, here you go. But it's just a means to an end. You get money or you acquire money so you can live your life. You can do other things. 
the money itself has no value. And when we've turned this whole thing into just acquiring money, we basically made our whole lives about acquiring something that is in itself valueless. And I think that's what people forget. They think they'll be happy if they get money, but they haven't gotten anything of value, nothing. And that's why they're still unhappy because you haven't actually made your life better. You haven't raised your quality of life. You, you, you might have like uh, subjectively, but not in any actual real way. And I think this is why like the philosophers have always said, like being a good person, whatever that means to you, creating a life for yourself, being authentic, all these ideas, they're not about just acquiring wealth. They're about the type of person you actually are, become, and want to be. And I think that's where we, we kind of miss this a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And so I guess, how does someone figure that out? Because I imagine, I imagine people who are listening, maybe not everybody, but I imagine some people who are listening are the same spot that I was once in life, where you're like broker in debt, you're yeah. working a job you hate, you're living a place you hate, you have to interact with people you hate all day. So like, how do you get from there to actually living a life that you want to? You know, it's funny, though, I feel like I was there, too. I was totally in that place, you know, and, you know, and sometimes I find myself there unwittingly again and not meaning to. Right. It happens. sometimes, but It's not never as bad. Obviously, it was before, I guess I should say. But but I think you need clarity when you're in that situation, because the problem is, is I think when you're in a situation where you're you're depressed, broke you hate the things around you, you hate the life you have, it's easy to look for a quick solution. It's easy to gamble, right? It's easy to look at it and say, my problem is wealth. My problem is money. That's my problem. And to have this sort of narrow, so you have blinders on, right? Because you, you're constantly looking at your phone. You're constantly watching TV. You're seeing all these people with a ton of money doing, seemingly doing whatever they want. They're happy. They're smiling. They're drinking beers on the beach, whatever the hell they're doing, right? You know, in Lamborghinis and stuff. And like, you feel miserable. But you're, you need clarity. You need to like look around you and ask yourself, like, well, what about this is maybe my fault or what's in my power to change? What can I do to actually improve my life now as it is and start building up slowly? And yes, it probably will involve making more money, but it's not about just acquiring money, you know, endlessly. I think that's, we're missing something significant. Yeah, uh, I I agree. Definitely. Um, And I think, the idea of making more money like that's a common saying whereas i it would be more helpful if like we had something like increasing our income gap or something like that and and when i say that people are going to think well the income gap between the rich and the poor that's not what i'm talking about no i'm talking about the income gap between how much money you make and how much money you spend because that's the clearest indicator between you and your happiness related to money and also with life because the bigger your income gap, the more freedom it gives you in life. Like, yeah, and you know, no, go ahead. Go ahead like once you get that, once you build that income gap up into a and save it into a point where you realize, oh, I cannot work for a few weeks and I'll be okay. Oh, I cannot work for a few months and I'll be okay. And like all of a sudden, that gives you freedom to be like, but wait, I hate my job. Why am I still going there? Why don't I? Why don't I take those months and start figuring out what I want to do or start trying to do something that I want to do with that? Yeah, it gives you freedom to start living your life as you really want to, right? And I think that's crucial. And like, when I say get clarity, I think that works really well with what you were saying too, because like looking at your life and asking yourself, like, am I buying things because I'm depressed? Am I trying to make myself happy in empty ways, trying to show off to other people that I don't even care what they think? You know, am I trying to just like, What am I actually trying to do? And how is that hurting me from actually having real quality of life, real happiness, real enjoyment? You know, am I isolating people I love because I'm like, you know, angry or depressed or mad or jealous or whatever? And like actually looking at that and then addressing those things, I think we can actually make our lives a lot better. And it's hard. It takes a lot of time. I think that's the other thing that I should say that, right? Because you, as you pointed out, people like gambling because it seems like a quick thing. Like they're, well, somebody wins the lottery. And it's like, yeah, I guess somebody theoretically does, right? And they get this quick bump. So it's very appealing in that sense. But I think there's, it's way more appealing the long haul because you actually make real change that has a real impact and is real value. And you might not see it right away, but as soon as you start seeing it, it snowballs. Like everything we talk about, like the small delights, all of that. It's like, you just start seeing how things are better and better and the world can't turn around again. It can't turn back to the way it was. 
Yeah. And what you say there is important is that uh, you kind of become somebody else. Like the end goal isn't really that important. It's the person you become in achievement of that goal. So like case in point with people and money. So somebody who learns to increase their income gap and save and invest money, they learn how to handle money. So then when they have a lot of money, they know how to handle it and they're okay. Whereas somebody who wins the lottery, uh, they've done studies on this. Most people who win the lottery end up blowing it all and then being more Bankrupt. depressed than before they won the lottery. Yeah, yeah, because they didn't learn the skills to how to handle money. And so all of a sudden yeah. they get all this money and it's gone because, yeah. Well, no, and it doesn't feel like they, they didn't earn it. So they're quick to hand it out to whoever asks because it doesn't feel like theirs. And it's not theirs in some important sense, right? It just happened. And that's why they end up bankrupt later, usually within like a year. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's important. You know, so I think it's, you got to find things that actually really matter to you. That's what I think we're saying, right? Something like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think it goes back to like looking back through your life and definitely taking out some, a paper, pencil, journal, yeah. whatever it is, and using that while you're doing this. And like thinking about times in your life where you felt really fulfilled or really content, or you felt really just good about yourself. And why was that? Did you have a bunch of this paper money? Maybe, probably not. Like there, so I just finished reading this book, The Way of Integrity. And uh, yeah, yeah, so we read books together of the same author and she's great. And one of the things she was talking about was one of her clients, how he was basically on the path of money, multimillionaire. And he just thought like, but it wasn't enough. Like he needed more money because he thought that everything in his life was just because he didn't have enough money. He already had enough money to live 10 lifetimes, but he thought that it was more money. That was the answer. And she would, she would guide him back through these exercises and he would be like, Oh yeah. It was like back before I had any money when I was just like camping with a friend. Like that was, that was the ultimate moment of his life. And, yeah. and she was like, well, maybe you should go towards that. Maybe that's where your happiness lies. And he's like, oh, no, 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 You just don't understand. I just need to make more money. And then it'll, yeah. and then it'll happen. Yeah. So like, yeah. Then I can so, camp whatever yeah. I want. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's so like, like the clarity that you're talking about is not deceiving yourself because we're the easiest to deceive. Like we know how to get around our own brain. So not deceiving yourself because going after those moments that actually make you happy will do it a lot more quickly than going after this intermediate thing to get there. One of my favorite things that, uh, one of my favorite philosophers is Nietzsche. And one of my favorite things he says is that like, you know, the greatest virtue is honesty and like personal honesty, being honest with ourselves because it's hard and we are also very good at deceiving ourselves. And I think that's what we need. We need to be honest with ourselves about what really matters, why we're doing things, and, and what we really want, ultimately, like what kind of world do we want to live in? What kind of person do we want to be? All of these things matter so much. And I think so few people actually ask those questions because it's so much easier just to do, to put blinders on, right? And just go for it. And it's way too late when you realize that this is not what you want and you're miserable. Uh, yeah, a lot of people think there's no cost to lying or there's very minimal cost <laughs> yeah. to lying. But in, in book after book and program after program, like, the benefits of honesty, yeah, it's tough because you have to go, oh, yeah. like, we live in this giant cultural lie. So yeah, yeah. actually standing up and being honest throughout all of that is really difficult. But even like, even if money is your thing, because I think everybody has to earn too much money to realize that that's not where it is. But like, even if, even if money is your thing, they've done studies of the world's richest people. And I think this was from the millionaire next door, but like the one value that the richest people in the world have, all of them is high integrity. Like being honest, doing, yeah. <laughs> doing what they, they say they're going to do. Like integrity is the one thing that aligns all the wealthiest people in the world. And you're like, but what about that scammer and this guy and he's crooked and whatever? Yeah, sure. You can find examples. Yeah. There's 8 billion people in the world, you know, but the one thing that all, almost all of them have is integrity. And it makes sense because once, once you're honest, then like, you know what your intention is. The world knows what your intention is. And you don't have to worry because if stuff doesn't 
align with you, you could be like, okay, fine. Like, not for me. Yeah. Cool. I'm just going to continue doing what I'm doing. You know, it's funny. Aristotle said that the level of exactness we should look for has to be relative to the problem. So when we talk about ethics or we talk about goodness or we talk about value, we're not looking for perfect exactness because you can always find examples outside of the norm or that don't fit with your thing. And it's understanding that that's key to understanding, like, you know, what the problem is. And I think you make a great point there that like you can always find yeah these people that scam people, rip people off that are wealthy, but are they happy? Are they good people? Are they, do they have that life that like you really want? And understanding that, because you see that like, yeah, there might be things that are, that don't fit our model, but that doesn't necessarily matter. You know, it's not always important. Yeah. So I just, I just want to uh, talk about one more thing, I think. So I was, I was looking at the cover of this book the other day, uh, Why the Rich Get Richer, which is by Kiyosaki, same guy who wrote uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I was looking at the cover of the book and the cover of the book is like, if you can imagine a really, really rich person's mansion, like they have this giant house And then they have this super long driveway that's like, that has these green hedges on the side of it. And And at the very end of that, yeah. And then at the very end of that super long driveway, there's a fence. And I was looking at that and I was like, man, how like, how lonely and terrible would that be to be, to be that secluded from the world, from other people, from the community that like, literally we're social animals. We need to interact with other people. How terrible would that be to have to, have that much wealth that you're afraid you have to have this giant fence you have to have all this distance between you and the other world like a lot of people look at money like it's a blessing and it can be but it can also be a giant curse if like if you let it yeah insulate you from society and if you think it's all that matters and you're so afraid of losing and i think you're right because i mean it's isolating right and it makes people paranoid it makes them scared it makes them also think you know other people out there, then it makes them willing to do things that they would normally not do. And I think you're right. That's also where we lose that community and that the world that we should be a part of. Right. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. It's a pretty good place. I like that. That's a good uh, metaphor to end on or, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You want anything else? You good? Uh, I think I'm good on this one. Yeah. Just, uh, right. you know, yeah. maybe, maybe as an exercise for everybody, just sit down after this episode with a pen and a paper and be like, Aside from money, what other things would give me fulfillment and contentment? And try to be honest with yourself. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good one. And then, yeah. and then just a little 1% shift. Like try and change your life just a little bit to go in that direction. It's all it takes. A little bit mm-hmm. and then that little bit becomes more and more. I do like that. The snowball effect's very helpful because mm-hmm. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. yeah. So is, uh, I think so. I think we kind of answered that question. So I think our notion of success can be dangerous depending on what our notion of success is. Yeah. So think it through. Don't have a dangerous notion of success. Thanks for listening. Check us out later this week for a quick fix. Uh, watch us on YouTube. Listen wherever you get your podcast. Like, subscribe, share. It helps us out a lot. And we will be back later. Yeah, with more. Until then, though. Later, Randy. Later, Danny. <laughs>